Hello students, in today's class, we are going to learn about high capacity cloning vectors, including yeast artificial chromosomes and bacterial artificial chromosomes. So yeast artificial chromosome is a genetically engineered chromosome that is derived from yeast and is ligated to a bacterial plasmid. Yeast artificial chromosomes are basically shuttle vectors that are capable of replicating in bacteria as well as in a yeast cell. Coming to the components of yeast artificial chromosomes, they contain uh, autonomous replicating sequences, which are basically origin of replication used for propagation in yeast. Similarly, they also have uh, origin of replication used for propagation in bacteria, allowing yeast artificial chromosomes to be maintained in a bacterial cell. Then it also has centromeric regions. So these are the regions to which the spindle fibers attach during cell division, allowing proper separation of the yeast artificial chromosome into both the daughter cells. Then we have the telomeric regions. So telomeric regions help to protect the linear chromosomes of eukaryote by preventing their degradation from the uh, ends of the chromosome. Then we also have the selection marker for yeast as well as for use in bacteria. Bacterial selection markers majorly includes antibiotic resistant genes. So I will discuss about the yeast selection markers shortly. We also have a multiple cloning site region that contains a collection of unique restriction enzyme target sites, which can be used for cloning reaction. Then we also have two BAM H1 sites that are located at the ends of the telomeric regions. So during cloning reaction, the first step is to digest with BAM H1 region to remove this chunk of DNA and which is going to linearize the yeast artificial chromosome as it can be seen in the diagram. So first step to digest with BAM H1 and that leads to formation of a linear yeast artificial chromosome. In the second step, the yeast artificial chromosome is then digested at the multiple cloning site using a suitable restriction enzyme. And that uh, leads to formation of the fragments of the yeast artificial chromosome. And then they are ligated with the insert molecule. So up to as large as two megabase pairs DNA fragment can be cloned here. And the two, the two are mixed in presence of enzyme DNA ligase. After the ligation reaction that results in formation of a recombinant yeast artificial chromosome. The next step is transformation reaction, which is generally done by electroporation. So in case of yeast artificial chromosomes, electroporation is a suitable method since the constructs are quite large and they are difficult to transform by other methods. So the commonly used selection genes in yeast artificial chrom uh, chromosome includes uridine oxytropy gene. So basically the host cell that we make use of, they are uh, unable to synthesize or unable to have the URA3 gene as a result of which they are unable to encode the enzyme orodidin phosphate decarboxylase, which plays an important role in uracil synthesis pathway. Now, uh, the chromosome contains URA3 gene as a result of which the cells that have picked up the yeast artificial chromosome the yeast cells that have picked up the yeast artificial chromosomes will be able to grow in absence of ready-made form of uracil. So this acts as a selection marker for the yeast artificial chromosome. Similarly, we also have presence of a screening marker that can be used to determine uh, the presence or absence of the insert in the yeast artificial chromosome. So here uh, we have a selection marker gene, which is known as sub-4 gene, which stands for the suppressor-4 gene that basically suppresses the expression of ADA1 gene. So ADA1 gene is basically responsible for accumulation of a red colored pigment that results in formation of red colored colonies. Now, 
uh, in the wild type strains because of the presence of active suppressor 4 gene product ada1 gene is unable to express however if we have recombinant that is if we have a clone present or being cloned in the multiple cloning site, then the suppressor 4 gene becomes inactive, allowing expression of ADA1 gene, and hence the resulting colonies will be red in color. So this helps in differentiation of the recombinant colonies versus the wild type colonies. So recombinant colonies are the ones in which the insert is present within the yeast artificial chromosome. Now coming to the applications, yeast artificial chromosomes are used for preparing gene libraries and they can be used for chromosome walking and mapping reactions. One of the disadvantages with the use of yeast artificial chromosome is instability of the insert because of uh, often the chromosomes undergo rearrangement reactions, especially because of their large size. And also another process is uh, the experiment or the whole process is quite challenging. However, uh, the electroporation process uh, helps to simplify or make the process a little bit easier uh, as it can force large DNA fragments or constructs into the host cell. Then coming to the second type of chromosome is the bacterial artificial chromosomes. So it has uh, less carrying capacity compared to a yeast artificial chromosome. Yeast artificial chromosome can take uh, an insert of about two or few megabase pairs in size, while the bacterial artificial chromosome can uh, take an insert size of about 100 to 300 kilobase pairs in size. So it has uh, many genes. Uh, that are present in normal vectors such as the origin of replication required for propagation of the bacterial artificial chromosome, antibiotic resistant gene that is used as a selection marker. Now, additionally, it shows presence of F plasmid par gene. So F plasmid par gene allows for segregation of the bacterial artificial chromosome into each daughter cell during the cell division cycle. Also, we have presence of the lac A gene within the multiple cloning site. So we have already discussed lac A gene and codes for or uh, results in formation of blue color colonies in presence of artificial substrate that is XCAL and uh, inducer that is IPTG. While if we are able to clone in the multiple cloning site, we have a recombinant bacterial artificial chromosome, in which case the lag Z gene will be inactive and that will result in formation of white colony. So this helps in screening of the inserts and hence it is also known as a screenable marker. Coming to the advantages, bacterial artificial chromosomes also have a large carrying capacity and they are generally applicable for large scale human genome sequencing projects. They are also useful for cloning the entire viral sequences and they are used for cloning large genes that can be allied for making transgenic mice. Uh, some of the disadvantages are again because of the large size of the construct, uh, you need electroporation like method for transformation. And another disadvantage is uh, the low copy number. So the copy number of the plasmid is low. So often it can lead to loss of the uh, yeast artificial, sorry, the bacterial artificial chromosome. So here, uh, what can be done is an another origin of replication, which is known as the ORIV, which stands for vegetative origin of replication, can be cloned in the bacterial artificial chromosome. And this will increase the copy number of the bacterial artificial chromosome in presence of a transacting regulatory factor, which is known as TRF. So that's it about bacterial and yeast artificial chromosomes. Uh, kindly like, share and subscribe if you like the contents. Thank you.